gentlemen. Hailing from the from top rope. The top rope. Leroy, your boy. Birdie YouTube man. Robbie C. How are you today? Dude, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I uh I 100% had a sinus infection while I was up there last week. Uh, you know, those last couple of days, you seemed like you were feeling a little rough. It, uh, I mean, when we finished filming live last week, I literally, my eyes were like watering. Mm -hmm. I was so congested. Uh, so I literally, I left Jason's house Saturday morning, drove home, and I didn't even stop at my house. I just drove straight to an urgent care uh <laughs> and like got medicine so got medicine got a shot um so i'm feeling a lot better i'm in that like the meds are now also flushing out all yeah. the bad stuff mm -hmm. uh so i still i don't think i sound any better than i was last week but i disagree I you definitely feel sound better. i feel infinitely better Good. um so yeah feeling great how are you doing Good man. Oh, I also want to point out it was funny. Uh, I was just showing Kimberly, like, well, obviously, my wife Kimberly will talk about the po podcast, right? And I showed her just like, I was like, hey, it was really interesting. We were all three in the studio. Here's the new studio setup. And she goes, why does Robbie look like he's in prison right now? So I thought that was very <laughs> funny. Um, because you just had like that brick wall behind you. It was just really funny. Anyway, yeah. uh, I'm doing really well. Uh, despite you know. I think the bad days of throwing in disc golf are bothering me less and less. So maybe that's good. Maybe I'm growing. I don't know. But yeah. I think the live is so much fun for me. Like, I don't even really care if I'm throwing bad anymore. I just like like hanging out with all of you and you people. So that's that's great. Uh, headed into Memorial Day weekend, long weekend. Hopefully get some uh, additional disc golf in. You know what I mean? So yeah. New London and then may i'm grooming my home course because we are having a foundation staff uh tag round and cookout at my house in june so i'm cutting Sick. fairways into my yard and it's just i, I want to make it great for the guys i think i'm adding a couple holes so i don't know something this this part of summer like awakens my like disc golf love again and i love it so i'm, I'm happy happy to be here happy for this episode and i love putters like let's just say it. this is a putter episode everybody spoiler I, alert here i um, i love putters as well i it uh if i had one drawback on putters it's that they take up more space in the bag yep. so i can i physically cannot carry as much discs when i bag more putters and i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing but it is a reality that we live in um but speaking of realities that we live in brad before we bring in our guests we want to let people know that we do have our first video, as you guys are watching, as we're recording this, it's going live in about two hours. Mm -hmm. um, but for those of you who are watching this when this episode drops, it will have been live for several, for over a day. Mm -hmm. um, but there is a video live on In The Bag's YouTube channel. Um, so I would say the two easiest ways you're going to find it. You're going to Google or like look up on YouTube In The Bag uh, to go find it that way. Mm -hmm. Or... If because it's a newer channel, sometimes they're really difficult to find on mm -hmm. those newer channels. So another fast way to get there is if you head over to my channel, Robbie C Disc Golf, you need to check out the video that I'm dropping today. The thumbnail is going to be Brad and Jason. It says the rematch. Um, and inside the description of that video, you'll have a link mm -hmm. to the other like to the back nine, which is on the in the bag YouTube channel. Right. Yeah. And you want to watch them as a pair. You got to see the whole thing play out. And for sure. Again, uh, we'll have some more details at the end of the episode. We have like kind of an actual schedule now for everybody on kind of like what we're going to drop when like this is all. Tra if you're if you're a Spotify, Apple, if you're a podcast listener only, zero is changing change. for you. Yep. If you're only a podcast listener, though, let me encourage you to go still go to the In the Bag YouTube channel. We are going to be doing some more short content, um, some more videos, um, and it's going to be a lot of like what you all want to see. You're going to have a lot of input in this channel. So, um, but you know, in June we are going to stop going to the foundation podcast we're still a foundation podcast as you see grip locks split off the banter split off now it's time for in the bag and debate night to start splitting off and then the foundation podcast channel is really going to just become the tour life channel that's kind of the back end look at this thing um but yeah make sure you head over there like robbie said check out the video on his channel it'll be linked over there make sure you subscribe turn on notifications so you can see what we're posting when we're posting it it's going to help out a ton the quicker we can get that subscriber count up and the more views and watch time we can get, the more time we can dedicate to that channel as far as creating content. So, um, yep. 
you know, do your disc RPM thing, guys. We're always blown away by your support. We're so grateful. I mean, we have 1,500 people in disc RPM right now, which is crazy. Uh, we're just so grateful for you all. So check that out. But in the meantime, let's bring in our guests because that is what we're all here for. Let's do it. Welcome in. Welcome in, Lee. How are you doing today, sir? Doing great. How y'all doing? We are doing well. We were commenting on, for you video watchers, he has some pretty sweet uh, pictures behind him. We always like appreciate the background <laughs> here a little bit. So Yeah, you always got to have the aesthetic. Yeah. Hey, I, well, we appreciate you. You're uh, someone who contacted us through the In the Bag uh, Instagram. You've used Disc RPM. You did all the right things, and here you are. You're here on the episode. Um, so what we'd like to do, besides learning about your uh, apparently really good decorating style, we'd like to get to know you more <laughs> as a uh, disc golfer, and Robbie will lead you through some questions there. Yeah, I, I cool. chuckled because it's like, I feel like we've got kind of the three backgrounds going here for mm-hmm. our visual watchers. Like my background is super Sith. like simple, uh, like black room, got a couple, little bit of color up there, some lights, all that. I feel like Lee, mm-hmm. you're living in this middle ground of this beautiful posters, all that. And then Brad's got the, I'm straight in the grind. I'm in the warehouse. Here we go. You got like so, a hot stamper right here. Like, yeah dude it's uh it's it's a time so uh lee we want to get to know you how long what two major questions how long you've been playing and what area of the country are you playing in uh i've been playing since about uh, the end of 2018 and uh i play uh tallahassee florida so florida disc golf anything down here it's just kind of the local area down here okay awesome i don't think we've had a lot of florida golfers have we i really don't think we have uh not that i know of florida florida golf is like i feel like it's so unique because you end up with a lot of you could drive an hour in florida and feel like you're playing in a drastically different environment like yeah yeah this is a surprising amount of elevation i feel like Mm -hmm. for a flat state (laughs) oh yeah absolutely i Florida also is home to the round that I've played with friends that we lost more discs than any other round. Uh, like one singular, we had six discs lost uh, across our crew. Uh, seven total, but one guy lost a disc twice. Uh, the wow. same disc. Uh, and when I say lost a disc twice, I mean literally lost it, bought it back from the pro shop, and then lost it again. Uh, Dang. <laughs> incredible so yeah the rough gets rough definitely so if you you got to keep it in the fairway here because uh it gets thick especially around summertime when things start getting real full <laughs> yeah, real. i mean you could like reach for your disc and you got an al- you got a, a crocodile no alligator and you got <laughs> iguanas and wild boar it's a, yeah. it's a whole different element down there i was told it, a pro tip always grab with your off hand because you never know when water <laughs> moccasin is going to be down there <laughs> oh yeah dude yeah. yeah i i i learned that lesson the hard way in the tournament of Ooh. my disc landed like it was perfectly on top of an ant pile and so went to like scoop it up and then it was just covered in ants and so my fingertips got bit up and i was like ow uh and it just ow. i mean it i it ruined everything for the rest of the round so uh i completely agree with that even if you don't live uh in the everglades florida uh, is know. the australia of the united states let's just call it what it is <laughs> okay that's pretty okay. accurate that's pretty i accurate. like that i like that um speaking of things that we might like and you know we don't know the answer to this question lee uh what if we were to put you in a field and we were to say hey throw we're gonna put a basket x amount of feet away from you and you've got to reach it con- comfortably on forehand and backhand not one time with the tailwinds, 300 feet of elevation change. Uh, what are you saying is your comfortable max or comfortable golf shot distance for backhand and forehand? Uh, backhand uh, ranges from around like the 420 to 450 range, from like 430 maybe. That's like where I feel comfortable that I can put it like close in the circle. And then forehand is like 350 range. It's not as powerful but it's still it it gets the job done come on come on y'all asked we you wanted you wanted some bigger arms uh here we are so <laughs> i, I want to just basically looking at your bag and we'll get into it but i see and when i see enforcer i'm like okay this person probably throws really far that's what i'm thinking yeah <laughs> it's it well it's it's enforcer with the notes 
that you have in here, like, yeah, correct, uh, because correct. So there are lots of you who probably could put an enforcer in your back, but what you're going to use it for is drastically different. It uh, says slightly so. overstable. That is the yeah. note. I'm just like, mm, okay. Yeah, okay. Let's hit okay. a few trees. Let's hit a few trees. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're here for it. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So let's put you on the putting green, Lee. And we, you got to putt. Uh, you've got to make 10 putts from 15 feet, 10 putts from 25 feet, 10 putts from 40 feet. How many are you making at each station? Uh, putting is kind of what holds me back. I feel like I haven't been the greatest putter in my career. <laughs> so, uh, but I, I did go out yesterday to attempt it to see what it would do. And, uh, from 15 feet, I was nine for 10. So, you know, there's always going to be that one, but for the most yeah. part there, uh, I can hit those in, but I'll might wink yank one to the right or something. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, 25 feet, uh, it's kind of my, my iffy range because I, I push putt so um out inside circle i push putt so um that's like more like four out of ten from there okay. and then um outside a circle I, I start spin putting mm -hmm. so um but that would be uh, 40 feet would be around two out of ten usually okay yeah so one or two will follow you yeah i i'm here for it that is i think the more that I like watch the pro tour players and things like that, like it's, it amazes me their circle one percentages. It's like, okay, I can somewhat grasp around that. But the mm -hmm. idea of like a great pro tour, like circle two putter is only hitting like 50% of their circle two putts. Mm -hmm. So I feel like mm -hmm. I want to pass along forgiveness to the crowd of like, I think some people walk in and they're like, my answer to this question from 40 feet is like one out of 10. Mm -hmm. And I'm embarrassed by that. And it's like, nah, dude, like you should, you should yeah. feel proud of that. You hit it's two out of 10. Of course. You hit two out of 10. You're cooking. You hit three out of 10. That's a pro tour tournament level average yeah. from circle two. So that's, that's a whole other shebang. Um, okay, so last question, Lee, would be then, uh, if you would say putting is what holds you back, what would you say is the biggest strength of your game? Uh, probably off the tee. Um, if I have a longer distance shot, like a low ceiling, tight fairway, but it's a little longer, kind of like those Calvin shots. Uh, those are kind of, I grew up watching him in uh, 2018. I saw him and Paul or ballad battle it out. So I've always kind of admired that like low, uh, style. So any shots with like long, low ceilings, usually kind of where I strive. Okay. Yeah. That's I, I was talking with uh swanky disc golf friends of the channel. Um, and, uh, we were talking yesterday and with OTB open becoming the major next year, uh, for champions cup at that Swinson course, uh, he said conspiracy theory. Did they move OTB or did they move champions cup out there so that Calvin would have a much better chance at winning a major because of all the low ceiling shots? That's funny. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'll say the roller players showed up for that though. I was surprised <laughs> to see the top 10, but yeah, it, yeah. it's definitely a low ceiling course. <laughs> it, it certainly makes my heart happy though, to watch Calvin not lean on the roller as much. And still come yeah. out with the dub. Uh, that's, I'm not saying rollers are bad. There is a skill to throwing rollers that I do not have. Uh, but uh, props to them. But speaking of rollers, uh, we want to drive right into your bag, Lee, uh, cool. because you have a roller disc in your bag. So we're talking putters, um, which is, I think, going to be a great conversation because we've got three really sneaky recommendations. Uh, mm -hmm. One of them, I would say, not so sneaky, but two of them easily overlooked mm -hmm. uh, amongst the wealth of disc golf options out there. So we're going to start with drivers. Um, you've got, you've got four trilogy drivers in there, which feels good. Uh, would you say that you have a brand that you kind of lean towards or are you just kind of like grabbing what feels good? Um, for the most part, I, it comes down to what feels good, but I do like to lean towards dynamic just uh, all three of those dynamic this uh the stamps and the plastics usually feel good and uh, sometimes they'll have flatter runs uh so you can find a flatter run from them usually i love what they have yeah i but I, I i throw all sorts of brands i'm not really brand loyal or anything i 
I love to just throw what I like, throw what feels good. Um, amen. I'm, I'm cracking good. up at one of these descriptions. Well, I'll, I won't interrupt you, but it, I'm trying not to like <laughs> die in oh. here. No, I'm jumping right into it. So you got two trespasses in the bag. Uh, <laughs> you've got a, it looks like like fusion orbit. Uh, and then um, fusion orbit. And then you, when you put discs into disc RPM, y'all, you can put show notes in there uh, and like notes, show disc notes. Um, so that way you can describe how it's thrown. Lee did a really good job because he has notes on almost all of these discs so that we kind of had a better idea of what they do. That also, if you want a better chance of getting on the show, please do that because now I have less questions, which allows me to kind of plan the show a little bit better. Uh, but you got two trespasses. One of them, you've described the makeup of like the plastic type of the disc a certain way. Let's talk about that one. <laughs> yeah, that would be the, um, the trespass and dirt plastic. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that one's good. Um, I, I got that at a used bin at a local plate again, and I didn't know what plastic it was, but it, uh, ever since I've gotten it, it's just been the flippiest driver of, of whole held. So, you know, I can put it on a hyzer and it'll just flip up and roll. And yeah, I didn't know what plastic it was. So I just put dirt in there. <laughs> that, that, that was funny. It caught me off guard. That was very funny. <laughs> I love that. So talk about, so you've got one that flips over, uh, but then you move over to another trespass. What is that big? Tre what is the difference between those two trespasses? Like, is the other one still pretty flippy as well? Um, it's it's flippy, but it's not as flippy. Um, the other one, unless you're throwing like a sky Annie or sky distance shot, it's usually just going to roll. But this one, you can kind of get it to air out and just glide to the right, as opposed to um, kind of like that. Y'all you know, y'all mentioned like that diver bomb effect, mm -hmm. to where it'll kind of just roll over. So yeah, it kind of just glides a little easier and you can put some hyzer and play with it. Okay. So you, one thing that I, I appreciate here is you did not, you put like, what's your main distance driver? Like you're going to quite often. So, um, mm -hmm. take, take us to the synapse with the lens of the trespass, if that makes any sense. So like the trespass isn't doing this, which makes me lean on the synapse more because it does this. Does that framework kind of make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the trespass, I'm kind of using it for more uh, shots that I want to slowly turn right or shots mm. that um, I kind of want to take a little power off to kind of have it flip up slow. But with the synapse, I can throw that flat and know it's only going to turn a little bit right and a little bit left, and it's not really going to deviate much. While that trespass, you kind of have to play with it to get that straight shot but i feel like with the synapse i can hit any like tight window from a good distance but it's uh because it just has that straight shot and not much turn not much fade mm. while the synapse has more of it uh, or the trespass has more like an s flight kind of mm. okay would you say that you can get more distance like if you were able to throw them both 10 times side mm -hmm. by side would you say that there's more distance potential in the trespass or is it too flippy? Is it too flippy to get that kind of max distance potential? Um, if I'm throwing a distance line, that might be, but it, it's not as torque resistant. I feel like with the synapse, I can kind of feel like I, no matter if, even if I put a little Annie on it, I know it's not going to burn over, but any, uh, like if you throw the trespass hard, I feel like it kind of burns and that might be, a nose down angle or something because i throw i don't really throw sky shots i throw like low shots mm -hmm. so i like to play with shots that i know won't burn over okay yeah that's uh i that is i calvin admittedly has said he's bad in distance competitions because he's not good at throwing like you said those sky shots things like that He's mm -hmm. just used to, and that's what I think makes it so insane is the man's throwing like 550 foot, like just frozen Laser ropes. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. it's insane. Um, so that, that makes total sense. So synapse main workhorse, what makes you jump over to that enforcer? What's the enforcer doing there for you? Uh, that's kind of just like 
my slightly overstable distance driver. I don't like super overstable distance drivers because I feel like I'll go to a fairway at that point because, you know, they're similar flights in uh, theory. So uh, I kind of use that as my overstable distance driver if I need to flex something and know it'll come back left or just a sweeping hyzer that I know I can put out there and it won't flip up or anything. It'll just kind of glide to the left. Okay. Oh, and... Um, it's my main forehand distance driver. So I'll forehand that a lot too. Okay. Okay. That's uh, so flex shots. Will you throw backhand flex shots with this as well? Yeah. So backhand flex shots and then forehand kind of like flat flip up to where like kind of like glides and then fades. Oh, yeah. That makes, that makes sense. I'm here for it. Uh, jo- I, Brad, when he's mentioned that, like, not super overstable, I know you're kind of in the process of putting distance drivers back in, Mm -hmm. but I feel like that comment for those who aren't throwing 400 plus probably should resonate more than, like, I don't want to glance past, I think, Lee, you dropped a huge amount of wisdom there Mm -hmm. (laughs) that our (laughs) listeners need to, like, pay attention to. Uh, Brad, what do you think about that, like, that statement of, if I need super overstable, I can just jump to a fairway? Yeah, I think that makes sense because I think there's not a lot of, I'm going to say this, this may not make sense, but like if I go down to a fairway driver, right, I know my arm speed is like closer to those. So I'm going to have more variation between shots, I guess. But when I jump up to like a distance driver, I'm not going to have a lot. Like, I don't feel like I have like the arm speed or the control at this point to like really tell the difference between like a stable distance driver a slightly overstable and a very overstable. They're either probably going to be like stable or very overstable for me, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And Mm -hmm. yeah, leaning on like the Strive is on like unlock something for me because the Strive is the first distance driver I've thrown in a very long, maybe ever, that I can can release on a little bit of hyzer. I can just, I can give it the beans as Nate says. We'll release on a little hyzer. It'll flip up, maybe turn a little bit and then fade out. Like it has a very like predictable flight every time for me. Um, if I need something different than that, I'm going to have to add a control element, which I'm going to lose if I have to throw max distance, I guess. So that's why I'm going to go down to like an enforcer, for example, not an enforcer, an evader, sorry, an evader, for example, because I know that's overstable, but I can control it like way better. I don't have to like give it like the beans. And then I'm going to have like that more predictable shot for like an overstable. And if I really need something overstable, I'm probably, I really want to get onto like a mid range or a putter. I may not be able to like get the distance I need, maybe, but I know I have the control plus the overstability. Does that make sense? Did I counter, did I add to that wisdom or did I say something different? I'm sorry. I think I kind of lost myself in the thought there. <laughs> no, I, I, I think it's definitely there. I, I think about, uh, I just played around uh, Tuesday with a couple of people um, in the like, elbow rehabbing i'm basically trying to play one full round a week right now i probably mm. could play more but with filming filming whatever i'm filming for the week and then one full round just to kind of ease back in and see how it feels during that full round and we stepped up to a 410 foot hole wide open field this should be textbook like get a birdie look at worst we're ta- like we're pitching up taking a par and i grabbed a distance driver because i was like Eh, let's send it. Let's go for it. But I had thought to myself, I should throw, I could just throw a fairway nice and smooth. And I'm not going to get the, like, I'm not going to get the birdie unless I make a long putt, but I could just throw this. And I, cause I had the distance driver in my hand, the window of error is so much larger. Yep. And I Lee, you've got more distance than both of us here. So I would want to ask you the better question is do you still even with feeling like you have the arm speed to throw those faster discs does the window of error feel like it's still just as large even when you have the potential to throw those faster discs or does that window of error kind of shrink and it feels similar to your fairways so you're asking if uh, the distance drivers feel like they have more error room yeah does that make sense like so for like yeah. for brad not feel like he has the arm to like really pump a distance driver that mm-hmm. window of error is so big mm-hmm. usually not worth the risk of throwing the distance driver mm-hmm. but fairway drivers that window is a lot smaller because his arm matches that well your arm matches the distance driver 
window. Uh, yeah. So yeah. does it feel like that window is comparable in terms of error to not error on distance drivers as it is to fairway drivers? Or is it still just because you're throwing that bigger disc, even with the arm speed potential, it's still pretty big? Yeah, I feel like with fairways, I definitely feel more confident hitting a gap. Like if I'm in the woods, I feel like that's where I would lean to it. But if I'm in an open field, I feel like it's uh, the distance driver. It's more predictable to fight the wind and stuff. So um, it depends on the shot, really. So like if I'm having an open shot and I know that I can air out the shot, uh, I, I usually go to the distance driver there, but if I have to shape a shot, I feel like the fairway driver is much better at doing that. Even if you lose, you, you're not going to lose a ton of distance. You're going to lose maybe 30 to 50 feet, but you'll be able to shape that shot much more. And I only, uh, I really only flick over stable. So it's a lot of straight to fade and then flex shots. So I feel like with a, fairway you can kind of hit the aim point easier even if you're not going to get as far down the fairway yeah hmm. i that makes sense that makes sense i'm here for it so let's jump down two fairways then uh we'll come back to the uh we'll come back to the special one uh we'll end uh fairway discussion on that one there's one that if you're <laughs> if you're watching this live you see it. It's sitting off to the side. Uh, so I want to talk under stable first, the rhythm and the river. What are those two? What's the differences between those two for you? Um, the river kind of fills my uh, stable trespass slot to where it's that hyzer flip to slow turn. And I know that I don't have to throw it that hard to get it to glide to the right. While the uh, the rhythm, I can, I can hit it hard and it's just going to be similar to the uh, synapse is like that straight. So it's really similar to the synapse and trespass. A comparison of one is my disc that I don't have to hit as hard and it'll glide over with uh, the rhythm. Even though it says it's a negative two one, I need to change the numbers on the app because it's more like a negative one two. The one I have is super flat top. So it's actually pretty overstable for a rhythm. Okay. I found that with the rhythm too. I don't feel like the rhythm is as flippy as you would think it would be. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. Plastic type has to have an effect on that though. Cause mm -hmm. I feel like most rhythms that I see end up being fissioned and yes. I like watching this, the gyro knots are freaking out in the chat right now. Uh, <laughs> but like this, how long have you had this rhythm? Like did they drop in neutron originally or is the neutron a later run? Um, I'm not sure. I found it at my local uh, store. So okay. yeah, a local retailer had it and I, I'm a big person on like how the disc feels. So I'll go to a store. I know what slot I'm looking for, but I don't know what disc it will be. So I'm just going disc by disc on the shelf filling. And I, I felt that one and I saw his flat top. It had a smooth rim and I just tried it out and I like the name and the rhythm. The red on red looks cool. So mm -hmm. Yeah, it just it kind of just fit the slot I was looking for. I actually wanted it to be a little flippier because I wanted to have that disc that slow turned, but mm. it's turned into my favorite straight fairway. Like by far, it, it's my favorite fairway right now in the bag. Okay, That's, I think I'm... we have some uh, neutron rhythms going up this Friday, Robbie. To be honest, okay, pick them up. Okay. They're a good disc. It's a great disc. Hi, right. Lee. Thank you, Lee. <laughs> thank you i don't i don't know in 102 episodes that we've ever like mentioned something like that and the people are just like boom like jumping in the uh jumping in the sale with us so we we appreciate it um mm -hmm. so the pioneer specifically those glow pioneers I, I that run is infamous to me our local shop had them for a little while um that that run a pioneer when i think of the pioneer i believe the pioneer was supposed to be latitude 64's answer to the firebird like it was you had the you had the pioneer the ati and the felon those were the trilogy like overstable options uh how does that with that like framing in mind does the pioneer meet that for you or is it just simply not that type of disc 
the the pioneer i've always described it to people who don't know about it is like a beaten glidier firebird to where okay. it's kind of like those uh i think the 2019 sexton ones they were a little flippier and they kind of glided a little more and um so i don't have to hit it as hard but i still know it's going to have a dependable fade and that's my uh, main forehand disc is i use that because i know i can throw it flat and it's not going to roll over and it's not going to fade super hard it'll just push and then have a dependable fade so that's always that that uh the pioneer has been a staple in my bag for a while and i used to throw the um gold line burst that was my favorite plastic for years and i retired two of those okay mm -hmm. dude that's i mean that moonshine run of pioneer i'm i bet that if you went to someone who like had a online inventory I feel like if you went to like trydisc.com, you could probably find that run of Pioneer sitting on someone's shelf somewhere. I don't know what it was about that run, but I, they ran so many of them. Uh, it was wild. Uh, I felt like I could walk into most shops and find that run of Pioneer. So if you love it, it's it should still be out there. Uh, so with that, you said Glidier beat in. So then you have a Champ Firebird that is what? what how does that fly for you? That thing is super overstable for a Firebird. Um, I got it from my friend Jason a while back, and I had it on the shelf because I thought it looked cool. But one day I was looking at it, I was like, I should try it. And that it is is super overstable. It, I can throw it on an Anheuser, and I know it's going to come back if I give it the air. But, uh, yeah, so that, I you know, I'm kind of throwing that for backhand spike shots or, like, real hard flex shots with a forehand but yeah it is much more overstable than that pioneer in my eyes yeah and then the most overstable the king of overstable you got a tilt in your bag oh yeah I had the tilt in the bag love it as soon as they uh, came out with the metas i've always had a tilt in the bag it is my get out of jail free card any scramble shot or any weird shot where you have to flare to the left or right mm -hmm. that's my go-to i actually really love that i throw some crazy shots it's, i really only throw flex backhands and forehands with it though to like get out of jail because you can hit it on that angle and know it's so going to get back so quick so you almost feel like you're throwing a baseball almost <laughs> yeah yeah i i was curious because brad throws some thumbers uh mm -hmm. i'm curious have you ever th considered like putting a tilt in the bag brad Four thumbers? I haven't, but I feel like I should. I don't even know. I don't think I've ever even thrown a tilt, to be mm. honest with you. Mm. We will have to remedy that. I'll bring yeah. one up when I come for Worlds. Okay. Uh, like, it's it's a game changer. Uh, it yeah. is. I like the thumber. Yeah. I like I like to throw thumbers. Incredible. <laughs> uh, so let's dive through. We're going to dive through mids real fast because I want to make sure that we don't keep you too long, Lee. We appreciate you coming on with us this morning. Yeah, of course. Uh, so mids, a, a mid that is near and dear to Brad's heart, the Bobcat. Big old Bobcat. What's, uh, what's the Bobcat doing for you? And I want to kind of put it right next to the tactic because I feel like those could be eerily similar. Mm -hmm. uh yeah i feel like the bobcat is actually like sorry brad but it's like my most used disc in my bag it's really only for like those utility shots because for the most part i'll either lean to that firebird or like you said that tactic mm -hmm. those are like my go-to over stable disc but this is like if i feel like i gotta hit a lower ceiling than the tactic i can kind of throw that and know it's gonna have a little fade but it's not as overstable as I would have wanted, but it still it still has some stability. Yeah, I think the thing I liked about the Bobcat, A, it was like super flat, which I'm sure is what you like about yeah. it. Um, and also, I, I also think I have maybe the most overstable Bobcat on the planet. Just, I'm throwing that out there. But I did like that I could throw it and it stayed in the air for a while. It did seem like it wanted to glide and still have the overstability, which was at the time a very hard disc for me to come by. Um, mm -hmm. Have you thrown a Quake? before i have not i've heard y'all talk about it but um i haven't even felt one so i don't know They're, if my local store has them but yeah because they uh like the pl lines tend to be like a little flatter at least from the ones i've seen uh flat top and it, but 
It, it does well. The Bobcat has a bead too, so I mean, I know you does said it? you didn't really love beads, but do they not bother you on mid ranges? I thought the Bobcat was flat. Does it have a bead? I rem I have one right behind me. In the meantime, but yeah, <laughs> uh, the, the Quake definitely does. So the Quake may not be for you in that respect. Mm -hmm. Um, so you have your tactic that's like more overstable that you need to marry. You have the bobcat that's like low ceiling. You need like a straight, but with some overstability at the end. And then you have an eclipse hex. So how does that fit in? I'm curious, Robbie, the hex and the buzz SS, like what they're doing differently for you. Yeah. Especially with your arm speed. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the hex, um, I, I have a kind of a theme with all of my discs. Like I have the four stability slots. I have the overstable, the slightly stable, the slightly understable, and then the roller. So it's kind of like I go down those four tiers. So the buzz SS, or we'll here we'll start with the hex. The hex, I kind of uh, I feel like it's kind of like the rhythm to where I can hit it hard and uh, know that it's not going to roll over. While the uh, Buzz SS, it's just this beautiful slow turn. And uh, Buzz SS is kind of my, one of my favorite discs right now, too, for my mid ranges, because I feel like it still is torque resistant, which um, I know, like the Origin and stuff, I've tried that, and I felt like it wasn't as torque resistant. I don't know, that maybe just how I was holding it or something. I but would with the Buzz agree. S <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it it, it 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 turns pretty easy for me. So if it turns easy for me, it's definitely gonna turn easy for you. Yeah. So I was looking for that disc that just had that slow turn if you hit it flat, and that Buzz SS has been the best so far, and it's very flat top like all my other ones. <laughs> I'm here for it. And if if you need easy turn, you got the Rollo chilling in there. Oh yeah, that is that's been fun. I love the Rollo. I actually throw like a lot of like high hyzer shots that just slowly turn with it. If like I have to like get around a corner or something, I love it for those types of shots or just like really easy rollers to put down, just put a little ante with not much power and it just rolls forever. <laughs> Dude, I, the Rolo might be the best thing Innova has released in the past three years, four years. Yeah. Uh, I just feel like they created this like meme seeming disc and it has just turned into a, a love, a beloved disc by so, so many people. Mm -hmm. um, so I love, I love that you described this as you have the four different stabilities and you just kind of ramp that up uh, depending yeah. on the speed and everything. So I feel like that can really help shape the putter conversation, especially uh, as mm -hmm. Brad is thinking and contemplating through the disc he threw. Yep. So would you consider the tactic more of that like putter slot in your head or does it really kind of float between the mids and the putters? Yeah, I've always thought of it as an, a putt and approach. Like I'll okay. throw it off the tee every now and then, but um, if it's more than 250, you know, I'm not really looking to smash on it i'll kind of smooth something out with the mid-range or just play with the angle of the mid-range or something but yeah it's it's a lot of um scramble shots that i use it for like i use a lot of forehands for that or just like backhand straight to fades but yeah i i don't really use it that much off the tee so i, I think of it more of as a better yeah okay so then the glitch filling that like understable side or are you ever actually even throwing the glitch like for distance no no the, the glitch is like 100 to 150 feet i'm not i'm not really throwing it more out of there it's kind of just that fun disc that you can just use all wrist and it kind of just goes straight um i've had some fun little throw-ins with the glitch but yeah i don't really use it um it, it's not very torque resistant off the tee so i i uh with my putters as well i, I only throw fan grip for most of my putters other than okay. the tactic, I, you know, I'll grip, uh, power grip that because it takes a little bit more power. But, yeah, I like to uh, fan grip those and kind of just smooth them out, especially okay. with the glitch. So would you say that your your Eclipse Envy, does it fill more of the, like, synapse, rhythm, hex side? Or is it closer to, like, Enforcer, Firebird, or, like, Enforcer, Pioneer, Bobcat side? Yeah, it's definitely in that synapse slot. Yeah. 
of okay. the straight to slightly overstable to where I can hit it and I know it's going to go straight, not turn, not fade that much. But yeah, it um, it definitely fills that slot of straight to slightly overstable. And you said you, you're really just throwing that off the tee. You're not really trying to approach with that at all, right? Not too much, unless I'm doing like a real baby flex that kind of never comes all the way back. But yeah, I do use it more off the tee, I feel like, than any of my other putters because it, I, as people know, the envies always feel like mid ranges. I don't know what it is about them, but they just go so fast. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, I love them. So yeah, I, I don't really them. use it for the approach shots because I feel like I can fluff it sometimes. And then that's when I see the fade come in as if you don't get the right amount of spin or on it or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the keystone is somewhat new, trying to fill this slot that we're going to talk about today, but mm -hmm. not too convinced that it could be the answer for you. It sounds like, yeah, that is definitely, it's something I had on my shelf and I, I really haven't never had many flippy putters or anything in my bag. So I kind of was trying that out. I got that from Connor O'Reilly when he came to the Tallahassee Open, I think two, two a year or two ago. So okay. he came out there and I bought that keystone from him. So it's kind of just that disc that I don't have to throw that hard and I'll get that straight flight or, or it's like a slow flip up. Yeah. That buzz SS river. Yeah. It's similar to that buzz pass. SS. Yeah. Okay. So we're looking for something, but ideally you'd want something that can kind of either fill that slot or even give you a little more flip option. I'd say yeah, a little like. more almost because I want something that I can put on hyzer and know it's just going to have that flip up shot. I'll see it sometimes with the glitch, but I feel like with the glitch, you know, if you get any anhyzer on it, it's just gliding to the right. So I want something that I kind of know that I can flip up, but I know it's not going to burn over. Okay. For those, so Brad, yeah. Brad, what did we try today? Interesting. Okay. I think I know. Anyway, uh, today through the AVR three, Lee, you can see how flat this boy is. Cool. Yeah. Um, I threw the love from Jester disc golf and I threw the one, the only pixel today those are uh, the three that i threw cool yeah i'm i haven't heard of uh jester is that a it's a smaller company jester disco mm -hmm. yep uh, they're made by mvp streamline cool yeah um those sound cool yeah the pixel i was just watching simon's video the other day and he had this crazy like 200 foot throwing with that thing and watching him throw the pixel is just crazy how he can just get it on that anhyzer and it just keeps gliding so that that disc is something cool yeah so brad hand feel one of the big things that you've got we've kind of heard it mentioned with lee throughout not a bead guy loves a flat top disc hand feel how are these stacking up for you okay so obviously i just mentioned that the avr3 is like very flat like in the way that like a like without the thumb track, like the rhino or the pig is flat on top. Like it is that level of flat. Uh, no bead on this. It feels really good in my hand. I mean, I kind of expected it to not feel good. I don't love like a super flat disc on backhand, but it felt really good. It actually fits really nice in my fingers, which is not necessarily an easy task to have. Um, the love it is flat. It does have a shoulder, which is fine, but it is flat. No bead. Uh, this disc feels great. I mean, from the minute I grabbed it, I'm like, man, this feels really good. I've actually been looking for an excuse to throw it in an episode, and this was a perfect opportunity to throw it. Um, the plastic's called taffy plastic, so that's fun. Um, it's it's really cosmic uh, neutron is what it is. And then uh, the pixel. Here's what worries me about the pixel. It is flat on top. However, it does have a pretty big shoulder. You can see it here. Um, and I wouldn't call it a bead, but almost where like the overmold and the undermold connect, there's... It almost feels like a micro bead, almost, not quite. So that's kind of an interesting little thing about the pixel. And I know that's kind of something that bothers you. Yeah, I don't um, really mind micro beads. It's more of like the drone type beads, those real yeah. loud, obnoxious beads. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just something about them just doesn't feel right to me. Yeah. So <laughs> that's this... like the envy and that, and nothing crazy about yeah. those. Yeah. So you probably won't mind that at all then. So, I mean, hand feel wise, they all have a maybe a different hand feel. Um, if I was like picking one, like what feels best in my hand, it's the love for sure. 
Hmm. Um, okay. Second by second AVR three, and then third pixel actually. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Once again, the gyro, the gyro nation can't be too upset with us there though, because you know, like they took first and third. Uh, yeah, right. So scoreboard touche uh yeah. back back up office guys yeah. uh okay so took him to the field um had an idea of sort of what we were going for um anything shock you while you were out there like what was surprising about these yeah so and just for those of you who didn't watch the live today what i actually did was normally i'll just go to a field and just throw since we were looking for like what we're really looking for for lee was like a he asked for something like, Hey, I need like that 200 foot straightish like shot to the basket, like almost not upshot, but like a longer upshot. Right. That's kind of what you're looking for. Something straight. Mm -hmm. Um, so I went to actually to Tim Brook hole 18. It's about, it's a hundred, it says 165 on the T sign plays a little uphill. So we'll give it 170 maybe. Um, so I was like, okay, well these are putters we want. And like, that's the ACE run hole, right? You really just give it a straight, a straight bit if you can. Um, so I'm like, well, this is probably a good hole to try. Like, let's try a practical use. Right. Um, I think the thing that surprised me, the love was pretty much like I anticipated. Um, I'll give another comment on like what it reminds me of here in a minute. Uh, mm. pixel. I just could not release it very well. I'll be honest. Like it just was not driving with me for whatever reason, not the pixels fault, just mine. I think I have the same problem with the pixel that I have like started having with the inner core when I was putting is like my pinky gets caught. It's like a little deeper. So like my pinky gets caught on the end and like, I just release it terrible. Um, the thing that really surprised me, the AVR three, it's flight numbers are three, two, zero, two. I kind of expected this thing to be like a, have a little beef to it actually. Now don't get me wrong. It does have stability to it. It did fade. Um, but it's funny, like the more like like the more beans I gave it, the like the like more power I gave it, the straighter it got. It was very envy like, like you mm. give it some you give it some power, it'll like hold pretty straight and then have like that fade at the, like the last twenty thirty percent. So it did have stability, but it was not like beefy like I expected it to be. Mm -hmm. And it did it did want to it didn't like not fall. I expect anything with two glide on a putter, I expect it to just like fall out of the air. Like that's what I'm like expecting, whether that's yeah. right or wrong. Uh, it did not do that. Like it, it did, it did have a little glide, but not. I mean, the other two definitely had more glide. That's fair. That's fair. Uh okay. Hmm. Hmm. So, initial thoughts on when we think straight. Obviously, like you can achieve straight in a multitude of ways. You can achieve straight in a flex line. You can achieve like. You just look at the bogey bros themselves, right? Hunter straight is he's flipping it up every single time. Like it's coming out on Heiser bank. Uh, Trevor straight, hard Annie, and just letting something stable pan out. Um, so I know you said you didn't throw the pixel that well, uh, but when trying to achieve that straight shot, is there some that sort of shined more in that straight shot? Or even when you're thinking about how Lee was describing that flip up, did any of these seem to have more flip to them? Yeah. Even the pixel, the AVR three did not have flip up. So let's just like take that out of the discussion um, to achieve a straight shot with the AVR three. You're going to same way you would with an envy, like even my quote unquote straight envy. I'm like, okay, well it's going to have some fade at the end. It's just going to be slower fade because it's beat in. And if I need that shot, that's what I'm going to. I'm about to drop it in a little bit. Um, the love and the pixel actually were very straight just out the gate. Um, the pixel, if I, when I gave it, a, I was afraid to give the pixel any sort of power at first because it is, you know, it is a two speed. But when I, at the end, when I finally gave it a little power, it did go very, it would like flip up a tiny bit. My hyzer angle is like between 12 and seven degrees is kind of where it stays. So baby hyzer. Uh, measured in tech disc, shout out tech disc. Hey, um, so even there, like it would flip up a little bit and go straight. I, it really didn't turn. I don't, if I threw it harder, it would turn. It definitely had that like indication that it would do that if I wanted it to. Definitely had some glide. Um, the thing I liked about the love is it would, I mean, it like immediately encouraged me to throw it a little harder because it just like would just go straight. It would go straight. It's not turning. It would go straight. Um, it would, if I threw it, like, gave it a little extra, it would maybe, like, turn a little bit on me, but not, like, a bunch. 
it reminded me of like what a lobster used to do for me as a mid range. The lobster I loved because I could throw it really hard and it would just kind of like, it would turn like the whole flight would just turn a tiny bit. It would just have like that gentle turn the whole time. I feel like this is like a putter version of that. Um, for you, some of more, a higher arm speed, um, I feel like it would be like a little more torque resistant, but I also love the, lo like the love, like if I threw it two nose up, it didn't like fade out on me. If I threw it, like if I gave it, like if I rounded my shot a little too much, it didn't just like burn over. It just kind of turned slightly. It seemed like very like risk adverse. Like it was very like error friendly, if that is a thing, but it, it didn't seem like it, it wasn't its reactions to my input were not too, dr too dramatic either way. If the, that's probably the, a good way to say it i feel like the pixel however if i round the pixel i didn't i actually early, early released it a ton and it didn't like hyzer out so that probably says something but the pixel i feel like if i really rounded it or like i gave it too much ante i feel like it's going to be aggressive and take that input personally mm -hmm. but if you are like are really precise i think that's the distance going to give you the most glide and the most distance if that's what you're looking for and maybe with a little more finesse that I don't have, the pixel is probably going to give you like a hyzer flip to straight or a hyzer flip to turn or um, a big turn. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't know that I have the finesse that the pixel requires. Mm -hmm. I had a, uh, I had a Luna in the bag for a little bit. It was a 2019 Palmagred Luna. And I think that pixel looks from what you saw on the edge of it, it looks really similar. It has that like slight uh, round up to the flat part. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think that would be really similar to that. And I didn't love the Luna. So I think we were saying earlier about how it has that slight um, dome almost kind of would cause inconsistencies for me too. Cause something about that little dome has always messed me up and that's what pushed me away from the luna so here i don't know how well so yeah here's the pixel for audio you, mm -hmm. it's pretty like rounded you can definitely see that um the love like is like you, it's a little sharper can you see that it's almost more like a mid-range in mm -hmm. a way you know how like a, a rounded mid-range it actually kind of it, it, again it reminds me of the lobster a lot uh but the lobster is way more rounded uh kind of in the same way like now the hex is maybe like a bad example, but is if like the the hex if its rim was like swollen, that's kind of what this feels like. Mm. Mm. Cool. So it sounds like between the both of you from the from the objective third party, you know, involved in this, uh, I didn't throw either of them. Uh, I'm not going to throw either of these discs. Uh, not like ever in my life. I just these specific ones. I feel yeah. like, clarify, clarify. Uh, once again, I'm not trying to get Gyro Nation to hate me. Uh, it sounds like the the love is kind of jumping out in front. Is that how you're feeling, Brad? Yeah, because I, I think the love is going to be the slot you want you want the keystone to be. Mm -hmm. And the keystone just not. And like just objectively looking at your bag, I think, you know, that's really like what you're missing. Cause you again you're you love like that river buzz ss like trespass combo and i think like the love is going to be like the putter version of that for for you maybe not off the tee but ju just definitely that reliability you're looking for like maybe a slight hyzer flip and i think the love's also going to give you the the um ability to put some more power on it you just are and maybe it's not more power you just have better like um rotation you're going to get so i think you're going to get a, like a little different flight than me that's really going to fit that space. You're really like, if I'm looking at your disc RPM right now, you have a, a pretty big hole right there where I think this disc will just like kind of perfectly fit into. Mm -hmm. And I don't, it's, it's labeled as a two speed. I just don't really feel that. I feel like it's more of three speed personally. Mm -hmm. So Lee, would you be interested in uh, sending you this love uh, and trying it out? See if it works. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, it sounds like a good disc to fill that slot. And usually when I have a disc in the bag, you know, I'll keep it in there for a while. So it'll it'll slowly beat in and mm. probably even turn a little flippier eventually. But for right now, it sounds like that nice hyzer flip shot. So I think that's, yeah, I think that was the best recommendation. Dude, come on. Well, we will, uh, we'll get this in the mail for you. And Lee, hopefully have you on a future episode to hear uh, if you love the love. Yeah, sounds great. Yeah. 
Man. Another one. Episode 103 uh, of me saying another one. Okay, so the Strive, we came out and you were like, I don't know if the Strive, like, if I'm even sending this specific Strive out to Wes. Uh, I did, by the way. Hey, there you go, Wes. There you go. Uh, appreciation, right? Uh, my question would be, when I was watching the live, I didn't want to like, I kind of lurked in the live for a little while. Um, I saw you lurking. Yeah. So I lurked in the live for two reasons. One, because it allows me to know uh, mm-hmm. when I'm here at the house, like, oh, Brad's still at Timbrook. Okay, cool. Yeah. I've got a, minute, a yeah. Ti- I've yeah. got a little bit of time. I've got a little bit of time to get something else done before getting to the computer. Yeah. Uh, but then the other is uh, just so I feel like I can. If something shocking happens while you're out there, I can kind of lean into it and I can just kind of frame my questions. And that was one of the like on the AVR3. I really like the AVR3. I actually bagged AVR3s for a little while. Mm-hmm. I even putted with them. Um, but when he like when we talk straight disc, that's why I recommended it because it's there. But even before we went live, I asked like, OK, how did it feel? Was it more stable than you thought? Mm-hmm. Um and we adjust accordingly on those straight shots. The love, I feel like every time you threw the love on the live, you were like, dang, this disc is really good. Okay. Yeah. This disc is really good. Yep. Okay. Uh, is the love going, do you see room for the love in your bag? Or is it, it was just really good. Other people should check it out, but it probably wasn't that good to fill. It's not, it's not going to punch something out of your bag. Does that make sense? It can be a great disc that doesn't, fit a slot in your back see i don't know because i'm at this weird spot where um my disc rpm is not updated i'm hoping to update that today this is thursday so maybe it'll be up uh, updated by the time you see this but the spot that i try i always try to fill this spot with an envy which is that like straight to turn or like heiser flip to dead straight disc um and i just like having like a very overstable envy a like straight to slightly st- uh, stable envy and then a understable one and that understable envy is very hard to find. Um, I like, I'll like scour our use bin, and anytime I find one that's like really flippy or like really destroyed, I like grab it because that's the one I want. And I feel like that's just such a disc that's like either takes a lot of disc golf and a lot of time to get a disc there, um, or it's just going to be hard to find in general. So. I'm really kind of thinking the love can kind of be that slot. And like, I, again, there's parts of my bag I want to mold minimalize, but if I'm already throwing, like if I have two envies in there, that do two different things. I think I'm good there. That's that shot. This is a different shot. And I think, again, if we're talking about like room for error or like window of error, I think my error on like the understable flippy envy is like not worth just keeping that mold there just to say I have three different envies, if that makes sense. So the love might be that disc and i think i would treat it like an envy where i want to throw it hard that's what i like about the envy i can throw it hard and do those things i yeah. think i could throw the envy hard or the love hard and have a beautiful like just turn or like heiser flip it, it might be like a like a slow origin which i think is really kind of what i want mm. so i'm intrigued like I'm i'm sitting here staring at them on the shelf and i'm like do i try them for a minute I said I wasn't going to touch my bag very much, but I feel like that slot I can experiment with. I feel comfortable with that slot. Yeah. And maybe it's waiting till not Saturday with you yeah. know New London Longs looming around the corner. But right. maybe it's like it's it's a tricky part of competition season, right? Because mm-hmm. if you know that a disc like that is on the chopping block and you go to use it this weekend. Well, I won't use it. That's the thing. I think that's what makes me think about yeah like it. yeah so that's what i'm saying is like if let's let's say you don't put the the love in and you go you use the other like the other slots there but you're thinking to yourself there is a disc looming in the shadows waiting to take it over i feel like the performance of that disc is going to be so volatile because it's either going to be every time you throw it if it doesn't behave perfectly you're like Well, that's why I got to switch it out for the love. Like, that's why I got to do it. Or the other side where it's going to behave perfectly. And then you're like fully entrenched even deeper into I have to have this one in here. Yeah. Which almost invalidates something that is perfectly valid in the I'm not playing as much disc golf as I used to. 
I need this to season in faster. Maybe the love fills that slot. Mm -hmm. So it's just, uh, do you send it and put the love in there? And that way it could confirm for you really fast. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's so tricky. I, and I don't think there's a right answer. Mm -hmm. That may be a play at the home course only disc and just see like a one disc round and see how I like it and what it kind of does. Cause I have, a lot of different shot shapes I can try it on. And I think that gives me a good indication if it's going to be a good fit for me or not. Yeah. Yeah. Take the boys out for take the boys out tonight, take them out tomorrow mm -hmm. see what it, see how, see if you still love the love. The love uh, yeah. It's, it's all about finding those, those different spots. Now, speaking of something we love, we mentioned that we wanted to give like more of a, a schedule. Uh, so before we dive yes. into our favorite segment, uh, we want to make sure that we give you kind of the game plan. So, like we said, video is currently live. The back nine of bag draft number three. You guys heard the recap of it last week. Mm -hmm. um, that is currently live on our in the bag YouTube channel. But we don't have any like actual episodes. You guys are seeing this if you're video watchers. We're on Foundation Podcast still. Uh, so next week on Thursday, we're going to drop Brad's in the bag. Mm -hmm. Uh Love may or may not. Did you already shoot your like? Because I know you talked about it for Heiser Club. It was there. Uh, so you haven't shot it yet. Nope. It's my bag sitting right here beside me. Okay. So I will I will give Brad the caveat that you do not like this. This debate will not be settled by the time that video goes live. Mm -hmm. uh, it shouldn't be. Uh, yeah. Let's just say that you need yeah. more time than a week to process that. Uh, so Brad's going to drop that uh, the following week. And then on friday that'll be i think it's the 31st it is the 31st yep. because i'm getting another installment on my sleeve that day Heck yeah uh so uh the 31st will still drop in the bag for you video watchers it's still going to be on the foundation podcast channel mm -hmm. the next week i will drop an updated version of my in the bag on the in the bag youtube channel and then that Friday, which will be the seventh, correct, should be the seventh. Uh, that will be in the bag video on the in the bag YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. So yeah, so recap next week, the thirtieth is going to be my extended in the bag on the in the bag podcast channel. Thirty first foundation podcast is where the video will go live. Uh, our podcast 104, uh, Thursday the 6th, Robbie's in the bag, and then Friday the 7th will be on the In the Bag YouTube channel, uh, episode 105. Come on. So, um, no, I'm excited about it. Again, we're going to do some more content over there, and, you know, as quick as you can go over there, subscribe, notifications, give us some views, watch time, the more time we can dedicate over there. And, again, that channel's for you all just like everything else. So make sure you give us some ideas, what you want to see over there. I think what well, I was just thinking during the video, Robbie, or the podcast, and by the way, Apple Pod, any podcast, just listeners, nothing is changing for you at all. True, so true, true. You're good to go. Um, you know, a nice, like a, a nice, like form of content might be like if I am, okay, this situation with the envy and the love, right? The flippy envy and the love. Um, maybe I just go out and I, I a three hole challenge. Like I pick three holes at Tim Brook. I'm playing those three holes entirely with those two discs. And then at the end of that, I'm, One's going in the bag, one's coming out, hmm. I think. So let us know what you think. Give us some ideas in the comments. We're always open to what you want to see over there. Yeah. I also, I will say that part of my, I thought about this uh, because my studio setup and like the ability I have to like screen record and all that because I go live on, over on the gaming channel and everything mm -hmm. is uh, someone mentioned it. I should have looked up the comment, but another way, because there's a lot of bags that come through in our application uh, oh, yeah. like that were like, around. Yeah. Yeah. That were okay. Well, this is your bag is really well established. So I don't know that we could get like, if we did an episode, it would be a lot more of like thinning things out than it mm -hmm. would otherwise. So there is room for me kind of going through disc RPM and just like, all right, tell random number generator, pick bag 753. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then go to 753 and then just do like a quick, I would change this. I would ask this. I would ask this. I would ask this and doing like shorts with that. Mm -hmm. uh, that has definitely been an option that came up in my head. And if shorts in 90 seconds wasn't enough time, I could try to adjust accordingly. So 
Uh, I love that. We're idea. definitely we're definitely dreaming, y'all, of potential there. But the other ways we're dreaming is Brad. We're dreaming of a new plastic. Let's do it in the warehouse. All right. So we're we're in the middle of getting our huge MVP restock up. Um, so we've got your some of your favorites: time lapses, pixels, servos, signals. Let me look over here. Uh, Echo, Wrath, Octane, Relay, Envies. I mean, a lot of stuff's going on. If it's if it was available at that time of ordering, it, it's in here. And don't forget, we have custom heck yeah vision rhythms. We talked. We we're talking about rhythms. We'll have neutron rhythms as well, I believe. Um, we have echoes that are custom stamped, and we have a third mold that is escaping me right now. Uh, the glitch. glitches. Yep, the glitch. So make sure you check those out. Um, so a bunch again recently restocked is your best friend there so just all the mvp molds that are going up um we just got in the uh the sake bomb general like that's going up as well for you big arm folks um as well as uh braves we have braves in everybody that is a disc you need to check out if you the look so for that, good, dude. it's a very good disc uh, also some Kristen tatar glow um medium pures and those feel great as well um, we got a huge mini restock. Foundation minis are in. Um, I guess sneak preview. Um, I'm working on a new stamp for uh, some custom stamp in the bag stuff, Robbie. I'll fill you in when we're done recording. But ooh, yeah. teaser. Yeah, yeah teaser. Uh, but yeah, as far as for the and then uh, we still have the new college hats that we dropped last week. There's still several of those left. Make sure you check those out. Um, any of your favorite in the bag, Robbie C merch uh minis patches like all that is available make sure you check those out as well so recently restocks your best friend if you want to check out the love we have loves in stock they um jester also has the peace train and the dream weaver which both feel really great so jester and we can we have foundation care now if you're a u.s customer you can buy those discs out you can buy the love the peace train and the dream weaver and see hey maybe the peace train wasn't what you're looking for there's a form on our website we also have a new chat bot you can go to the chat bot and say hey Where's this where's this form? And if it doesn't know, guess what? Guess who you're gonna talk to? Jason. It's going right Ayo. to Jason. Um, so we're really amping up the customer service. They'll let you know where the, the form is. You submit the form and we'll get you a disc that you like instead. It's 30 day risk free. There's no reason not to try new plastic, folks. Yeah. I I'll tell you, so someone who wants to try new plastic, I'm think I'm looking at this Saki Bomb general. And let me tell you hot hot opinion here you know we'll we'll bring it in close for the hot opinion mm. uh to our chat uh i personally did not really love the advertisement for the general the whole like this disc bombs and the explosion and all that mm -hmm. but you know what props to them i'm proud of them for pushing creative limits now as someone who throws trilogy distance drivers uh, I really need Ricky to release a Orbit Raider. That would be sick. Uh, mm -hmm. As someone who loves the Raider, I would be all for that. Uh, but I bag Defenders currently. I'm very curious to see how the General stacks up against a, a Defender. And the best part is, is that with Foundation Care, I can get a Defender, or I can get a General, and if I'm like, hey, this wasn't it. It's not good. I'm not keeping it in the bag or it's not good enough to push on my defenders. I can then foundation care that thing back mm -hmm. and just get another Raider because I know we have Raiders in stock right now. So it's, uh, it's a beautiful, a beautiful thing to, there should be no fear in trying it. Oh, you want to try the gesture compared to your envy? Awesome. Okay. The gesture didn't work out. Mm -hmm. Send it back. Get an envy that you know you love. Uh, yeah. Like, or the roller, the roller looks fun. You get it, and it's not what you wanted it to be. Yeah, it wasn't fun for you. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> you have a natural Anheuser release. Yeah, Who right. knew? Uh, the Rolo did. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Send it back. Get yourself a tilt. It'll be great. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's, I, Brad, sounds like a great, great week. And I'm sure y'all are so busy <laughs> with getting all of that live. Uh, it's wild. Sneaky disc that you mentioned, and you glossed over it, the Wrath. You don't hear the anything about that. The fact that you have Wraths is actually nuts. Uh, that is that Philip Nowicki, shout out to him. Uh, he's in my Patreon and the Birdie fam. He was throwing the Wrath. I mean, it felt like years ago. 
Uh, mm. And I was like, Phil, that disc is sick, dude. What is that? He was like, it's the wrath. Nobody talks about it. I was, Phil's been talking about this thing for a long time, y'all. So check it out. The wrath's incredible. Uh, if they get the wrath, they love it and it's good. What do they do, Brad? Gonna put it in the bag. We'll see you all next week. <laughs>